Hello and welcome to day 364 of the Orthodox Study Bible in One Year podcast. Today we'll be reading from Daniel chapter 9 verse 1 through chapter 11 verse 28, the Proverbs of Solomon chapter 31 verses 21 through 25, and Revelation chapter 21. Let us begin with Daniel chapter 9, verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Xerxes, of the seed of the Medes, who reigned over the kingdom of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood in the books the number of years when the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet would be fulfilled for the desolation of Jerusalem, and it came to seventy years. Then I set my face toward the Lord God to seek him in prayer and supplication with fasting sackcloth and ashes. So I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession. I said, O Lord God, great and marvelous, who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and keep your commandments. We sinned and did wrong. We acted lawlessly, fell away, and turned away from your commandments and judgments. Neither did we obey your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our rulers, our fathers, and to all the people in the land. O Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but shame of face belongs to us as it is today, to the men of Judah, to those who dwell in Jerusalem, and to all Israel, those near and far in all the earth, wherever you scattered them in their faithlessness by which they rejected you. O Lord, shame of face belongs to us, our kings, our rulers, and to our fathers who sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness, whereas we fell away. We have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by the hands of his servants, the prophets. Yes, all Israel transgressed your law and turned aside so as not to obey your voice. Therefore the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, has come upon us because we sinned against you. So he confirmed his words which he spoke against us and against our judges who judged us by bringing upon us great calamities for under the whole heaven such has not taken place. As the things that happened in Jerusalem, as it is written in the law of Moses, all these calamities came upon us. Yet we have not entreated the Lord our God so as to turn from our wrongdoings and to gain insight into all your truth. Therefore the Lord watched and brought all these things upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in every work he does, though we have not obeyed his voice. So now, O Lord our God, who brought your people from the land of Egypt with a strong hand, and who made yourself a name as it is this day we have sinned and acted lawlessly. O Lord, in all your mercy, let your anger and your wrath be turned away from your city of Jerusalem, your her- your holy mountain, though we have sinned, for in our wrongdoings and those of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a disgrace among all those around us. So now, O Lord, our God, listen to the prayers of your servant and his supplications, and cause your face to shine on your sanctuary, which is deserted because of you, O Lord." O my God, incline your ear and hear, open your eyes and see our destruction and that of your city in which your name is called upon. For not on the basis of our righteous deeds do we bring our prayer for mercy before you, but on the basis of your abundant mercy. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, give heed and act. Do not delay for your sake, O my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. Now while I was still speaking, praying, and declaring my sins and the sins of my people Israel, and bringing my cry for mercy before the Lord my God concerning the holy mountain of my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, then the man Gabriel, whom I saw in my vision at the beginning, flew and touched me about the time of the evening sacrifice. He caused me to understand, and spoke with me, and said, O Daniel, I have now come forth to guide you with insight. At the beginning of your prayer the word went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are a man of desires. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish sin, to set an end to sin, to wipe out lawlessness, to atone for wrongdoings, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the holy of holies. You shall know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the word to be answered, And to build Jerusalem until Christ the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. Then the time 
shall return, and the streets and the wall shall be built. The time shall be left desolate. After the sixty-two weeks, the anointed one shall be put to death. Yet there shall be no upright judgment for him, and he shall destroy the city and the sanctuary with the prince who is coming, and they shall be cut off with a flood and to the end of the war, which will be cut short. He shall appoint the city to desolations, then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, and in the middle of the week my sacrifice and drink offering will be taken away, and there shall be in the temple the abomination of desolations, and to the end of the time an end to the desolation shall be appointed. Daniel chapter 10 verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus king of the Persians, a word was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The word was true, and great power and understanding were given to him in the vision. In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no desirable food, and no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself, until three whole weeks were fulfilled. Then, on the twenty-fourth day of the first month, I was beside the great river, that is, the Tigris. I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, there was a man clothed in fine linen, and his waist was girded with gold of, uh, of has. His body was like beryl, and his face like the appearance of lightning. His eyes were like lamps of fire, and his arms and legs like the appearance of shining brass. The sound of his words was like the voice of a multitude. I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men with me did not see the vision. But a great astonishment fell upon them, and they fled in fear. So I was left alone and saw this great vision, but no strength remained in me, for my splendor was turned into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words, and when I heard him, I was deeply troubled with my face on the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me and raised me up on my knees, and he said to me, O, o Daniel, a man of desires, understand the words I speak to you and stand upright, for now I have been sent to you. So when he spoke this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day you set your heart to understand and to afflict yourself before your God. Your words were heard, and I came because of your words. But the prince of the Persian kingdoms withstood me twenty-one days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the ruler of the Persian kingdom. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the last days, for the vision is for days yet to come. When he had spoken these words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and was deeply troubled. Again, suddenly, one having the likeness of a son of man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and spoke, and said to the one standing before me, My Lord, because of your vision, my insides churned within me, so I have no strength. For how can your servant, my Lord, speak with my Lord of this? As for me, no strength now remains in me, nor is any breath left in me. Then again, the one like the appearance of a man touched me and strengthened me. He said to me, O man of desires, peace be to you. Be courageous and strong. So when he spoke with me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, Do you know why I have come to you? But now I will return to the war against the ruler of the Persians, and I will go forth, and the ruler of the Greeks will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is no one loyal to me concerning this except Michael, your prince. Daniel chapter 11 verse 1. As for me in the first year of Cyrus, I stood in power and strength. Now I will tell you the truth. Behold, three kings will yet arise in Persia, and a fourth shall be far richer than all of them. And after he possesses his wealth, he shall rise up against all the kingdoms of the Greeks. Then a mighty king shall arise, and he shall rule a great dominion and do according to his will. After his kingdom is established, it shall be crushed and divided toward the four winds of heaven, but not among his posterity, nor according to his dominion with, with which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be uprooted and given to others besides these. Also the king of the south shall become strong, and one of his rulers shall prevail against him and have power over a great dominion under his authority. After his years they shall join forces, for the daughter of the king of the south shall go to the king of the north to make an agreement with him, but she shall not retain the power of her authority, and neither shall his seed stand, but she shall be betrayed 
along with those who brought her, the maiden, and he who strengthened her in those times. But from the flower of her root, one shall arise in his readiness and shall come against the host, enter the strongholds of the king of the north, and deal with them and prevail. Then he shall also carry their gods to Egypt with their molten images and all their precious vessels of silver and gold, along with a host of captives. Thus he shall stand above the king of the north. Then he will come against the kingdom of the king of the south, but shall return to his own land. But his sons shall assemble a multitude of great forces. Thus when he comes, he shall come and overwhelm and pass by. Then he shall rest. Again he shall contend to the extent of his strength. Then the king of the south shall be angered and go out and fight with the king of the north, who shall muster a great multitude. But this multitude shall be given into his hand. For he will defeat the multitude, and his heart will be lifted up. Yes, he shall cast down tens of thousands, but will not prevail. For the king of the north will return and muster a multitude greater than the former. And at the end of some years his invading army shall come with a great force and much equipment. Now in those times many will rise up against the king of the south. Even the sons of troublemakers among your people shall exalt themselves in fulfillment of the vision, but they will be weak. So the king of the north shall come and build a siege mound and take fortified cities, and the arms of the king of the south shall not withstand him. His choice troops will rise up, but there shall be no strength to resist. But he who comes against him shall do according to his will, and no one shall stand against him. He will stand in the land of beauty, and it shall be consumed by his hand. He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom, and he will do whatever seems right to him. He shall give him the daughter of women to corrupt her, but she will not remain with him or be for him. After this, he shall turn his face to the islands and shall take many, and cause rulers to cease from their disgrace. Nevertheless, his own disgrace shall turn back on him. Then he will turn his face toward the strength of his land, but he shall stumble and fall, and will not be found. Now a plant of the kingdom shall arise from his root and pass over in his readiness. He will further the glory of the kingdom, but in those days he shall be crushed, but not openly or in battle. After this, one shall arise in his readiness and be set at naught. Yet they did not give him the glory of the kingdom. Nevertheless, he shall enter with prosperity and seize the kingdom by intrigue. Then the arms of him who overwhelms and the rulers of the covenant shall be overwhelmed and crushed by his presence. Then after the leagues made with him, he shall work deceit, for he shall come up and overpower him with a small number of people. He shall come into the prosperous and wealthy places of the provinces and do what neither his fathers or forefathers have done. He will disperse plunder spoils and wealth among them and devise his plans against Egypt, but only for a time. Then his strength and his heart shall be stirred up against the king of the south with a large army. The king of the south shall engage him in war with a very large and mighty army, but the king's forces shall not stand, for they, for they will devise plans against him. They shall eat his provisions and crush him. His army shall be overwhelmed, and many shall fall down slain. Now both kings and their hearts will be set on evil, and they shall speak lies at the same table, but the evil will not prosper, for the end is yet at the appointed time. Then he shall return to his land with abundant possessions, but his heart shall be against the holy covenant, so he shall do evil, then return to his own land. Proverbs of Solomon, chapter 31, verse 21. She makes a double upper garment for her husband and garments of fine linen and purple for herself. Her husband is respected at the gates and when he sits in council with the elders who inhabit the land. She makes and sells fine linens and girdles to the Canaanites. She opens her mouth carefully and lawfully and controls her tongue. She clothes herself with strength and dignity and rejoices in the last days. Revelation chapter 21 now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God." And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give 
of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with twelve gates and twelve angels at the gates and names written on them which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of israel three gates on the east three gates on the north three gates on the south three and three gates on the west now the wall of the city had twelve foundations and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the lamb and he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city its gates and its wall the city is laid out as a square its length is as great as its breadth, and he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs, its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured its wall, one hundred and forty-four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel. The construction of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third Chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth Sardinox, the sixth Sardius, the seventh Crylocyte, the eighth Beryl, the ninth Topaz, the tenth Cryospray, the eleventh Jacinth, and the twelfth Amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl, and the, and the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Thank you for joining me on day 364 of the Orthodox Study Bible in One Year podcast. Tune in next time for day 365.